morning and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for Monday, March the 11th. To start the meeting tonight, we have a public hearing. We have about five public hearings tonight. We'll start with uh, anyone wishing to speak in the, on these uh, particular items can come to the microphone when called. First is a public hearing on a request to rezone the property along Kings Lane. That's from C2, from R2 to C3. Anyone wishing to speak on that? All right, we'll move down to a public hearing on request to rezone the property located at 2230 North Jackson Street from C2 to C3. Seeing none, we'll move down to number three. A public hearing on a request to rezone the property along Old Shelbyville Highway. That's from Ag to R1. Number four, a public hearing on a request to rezone property at 911 North Washington Street from C2 to C3. And finally, a public hearing on a request to rezone the property along Old Shelbyville Highway. Uh, that's from Ag to the R1. Anyone wishing to speak on that? We'll close the public hearing and move into the regular agenda. <coughs> Tonight we do not have Reverend Tom Murdoch. He phoned in just before time for the meeting in the can. He was, has a temperature and chose, chose not to come and share whatever he had with him. But if you will, please stand and I'll lead us in the invocation and the pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, we come tonight asking you to bless this meeting. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow on us, and particularly our city. Now that you go with us through this meeting, and how everything we do be in keeping with your will, these things we ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 Tell me the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sounded like the city recorder to call the roll. Paul Mocker. Here. Barry. Here. Clay. Here. Noah's. Here. Van. Here. Mathis. Here. Wilson. Present. Uh, seven, seven present. Uh, tonight we have uh, some visitors with us from our Mayor's Youth Council, and I want to recognize them and say thank you for the great job that the Youth Council did in helping us with the, helping with the, uh, what I like about Telehoma contest. So I think you, you guys did a great job with that, so thank you for coming tonight. And with that, uh, we'll move right into comments from citizens. Anyone here wishing to arrest, address the board for anything that's under the purview of the board? Could happen. See none. We'll move right into the agenda for tonight. And that's for anyone who would like to see. Is my tablet working here? It's on the okay, it's different. It's different what we can see them. Okay, we have a motion from That's Derek. Seconded, seconded from Bobby. motion from Derek Mann and seconded from Bobby Wilson. We got that. A motion to approve the agenda. I'd Any like questions to, about your agenda? I would like to add an item. It's uh, uh, just a simple item to uh, schedule a study session for our next board, the night of our next board meeting after the regular board meeting to discuss three items. I'll second. Uh, that would be on our next board meeting uh, after the meeting. After the meeting, yeah. On the meeting. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion uh, and a second to set a study session. That do, we want, do you want me to tell what those are now, or? Uh, would I think it'd be helpful? Uh, item one would be to uh, consider um, setting a ordinance by the board of mayor and aldermen to set triggers or um, or times or conditions that the zone that the board would entertain any kind of rezoning of any properties. 
in the future? Well, certainly it'd be at the end result. It would certainly have to be coming from the planning commission. Right. Um, they would recommend whether we rezone stuff or not. Um, but it, um, and, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted it on study session to have Mr. Worsham be there and to check to see if there's something uh, that we could put that would set conditions upon a time when a, con uh, a rezoning would be um, uh, so entertained. I think, I think you're wording it like um, a, it's a moratorium, but it would have wouldn't be a complete moratorium. It would be limitations. Um, anyways, I think that's it. He's just asking for a conversation in the study session. Yeah, conversation. To, yeah, to see what the mood, uh, the temperature of the board was on it and to discuss uh, legalities of it. Um, number two. Number two would be to discuss um, items that will be in the ordinance that we've already decided we'd have of an ordinance to discuss the use of the license plate readers. What kind of uh, conditions do we want to have in our ordinance on that uh, to give direction to the staff? And I don't think... Um, it would be appropriate for me just to, or it's just going to be a big waste of time for me to come up with all the things I think of and and then to bring it in the form of an ordinance before the board to be voted on and probably shot down because not everybody agreed. It's just to everybody talk about it, everybody give their ideas, and I think at the end of that meeting we would have uh, something that the staff could act on to bring us back to um, to put it, to vote on as an ordinance. Okay, number three. Uh, well, after talking that much, I forgot what the third one was. <laughs> we'll, we'll, think, we'll think about it during the meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Anyway, instead of studying, we've got a motion in, in a second. And, 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 and please vote yes or no. That's a 7 0. So we'll set that study session for the second meeting for this month. Very good. Now we're ready to vote on the agenda. And we'll add that as the last new business item. Well, we've just done it. We just added it. So we don't have to, don't have to add it to the agenda. It's done. Okay, yeah. Okay, any further comments about the agenda? Mr. Barry. I'd like to add an item to the end of the business uh, to hold an election to replace the mayor pro tem. Uh, based on what ordinance? We need a second and everything first. Well, that is the last item then for the new business then. No, you have to have a second. <laughs> okay, we got a motion. And a motion from Daniel Berry. I'm not even sure it's legal to do, but you definitely have to have a second at least. For the sake of discussion, I'll second the motion. We got a second. We got a second. <laughs> seconded the motion. Okay. And to add that to the item, to the agenda, we we'll vote on that amendment. Ready to vote. and four yeses and three noes. We'll add that to the new business. I'm not sure that that's uh, legal to do. I would need to see the ordinance that, because you can only have a yearly election, and I'm not sure I can we'll be talk, removed. We'll talk about it during that. <laughs> wow, shenanigans continue. Okay, any further changes to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll vote on the agenda as amended. That's a six to one. With the approval of the agenda, we'll go to reports from Alderman. Uh, Mayor uh, Alderman Mathis, we'll start with you tonight for your report. No comment tonight. Sir. No comment. Alderman Barry. Two quick ones. First, we have a Miss Tullahoma 
sitting in our audience. Congratulations, Ms. Paisley. Uh, another congratulations to Alan Potter. He was unanimously uh, elected by the TUA board to be the next president of Tohoma Utility Authorities. He will take those reins in mid-May. Alan is, I think, going to be a great next step for TUA. I'm looking forward to what he what he brings to the table. Looking forward to the future. Okay. I have no comment, but I did think of the third item. <laughs> and uh, that was just because I just found out right before I came in here that we would need to uh, do it. Uh, but the uh, uh, the Tullahoma license plate that I spoke of last time, um, we've kind of got more information on it and are ready to move forward. And I think uh, one of the things that we have to do is decide on where the money would go. Um, because it has to be a specific uh, place, department, or project. So um, I think that would be a good thing to have the whole board discuss where ideas of where we think the money should go. And then um, the other thing would be on different ideas to promote getting people to sign up, such as a contest to uh, design the artwork for the license plate, what the Tullahoma license plate will look like. So, and that's all things we could discuss. Just. I, I just think it would be better to, if we had everybody on the same page and get everybody's ideas. Um, we all we all work better together. So I've heard that before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wilson. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I did attend the um, commencement ceremony for Chief Sons, um, which was lovely, um, as well as a, another celebration. Um, for Chief Sons, which was hosted by Chris and Susie Coe. It was a really nice evening. Um, this past Saturday, I attended um, the Montlow College Foundation Gala at the Manchester Coffee County Convention Center. Uh, I believe it was a sold out event. It was, it was really nice. Um, they uh, raised money for the foundation to help students with out-of-pocket expenses, expenses such as books um, for students who are having trouble. So if anybody would um, like to donate to that cause, please uh, contact the um, Motley College Foundation. It's a great program. Um, just wanted to give a shout out to Tullahoma Fine Arts Center. Um, Saturday also was um, their city canvas social mixer, um, as well um, as they it was the artist reception for um, the the artists uh, for this month, which is MTSU student Catherine Welch, and her works will be um, on display now through uh, April 27th. Um, they also have a couple classes coming up. Um, on Thursday, March 14th, and Thursday, uh, March 28th, um, there'll be some classes there that will be Easter and St. Patrick's Day th themed events. Um, so try to support uh, Tullahoma Art Center. Um, and lastly, um, just wanted to, I mentioned this last time, just wanted to mention this again, that South Jackson Performing Arts Center, um, Saturday, March 17th, at 4 p.m. we'll be having their um, annual St. Patrick's Day celebration, so make sure everybody try to, to attend that. Um, something for the entire family there, um, music, lots of uh, treasure hunt, um, food. Um, yeah, and that's all I have there. Thank Sounds you. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Old man. No report this evening. No report. No <coughs> It's interesting what we continue to do as a board. Um, I guess I got to fight for not only my seat, but my seat is Mayor Pro Tem. You guys can't wait another couple of months. It's weird. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Sports Council. Uh, Sports Council Banquet, we never did mention that up here. We all failed to mention it. It was a huge success. And, um, I, you know, the Sports Council does a lot for the city of Tullahoma. And at the Sports Council Banquet a few months ago, well, last month, 
Uh, we had over 200 people there. It's a great collaboration between Telehoma Parks and Recreation and the Telehoma Sports Council. We have They have partnered on many projects uh, like the batting cages at the girls' softball fields, new softball equipment, and uh, the latest new foul poles for Little League. Um, so we really appreciate those who run the Sports Council and everything they're doing um, for our youth here in the city of Telehoma. Also, congratulations to our newest um, Miss Telehoma and um, Girl Keep Fighting. And if, if this is any indication, you can beat them, okay? You can beat them. So keep, keep fighting on, and uh, I hope this board will uh, make you proud this afternoon and how they treat women up here. Uh, so anyways, moving forward, I would also just like to say that, you know, my, my term is coming to a close. We, we have elections right around the corner again, and I want to encourage more citizens in the city of Tullahoma to get out, pull papers, get involved. Um, it is not too late. Uh, we have, what, about three or four weeks left until it, it closes. Uh, we, need, we need new blood, definitely, up here. And um, I would love to get behind some candidates to sit in my seat. Um, and, and so I encourage everybody just to get out and get involved. Um, we had a, a kind of pitiful turnout for school board elections as far as numbers. And, um, you know, that's, it's just, it's very important for you to be engaged uh, in the process, not only, you know, as teenagers, but also all the way up to your grandparents. Get them out, get them involved. Um, and Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And for one thing on my notes, I wanted to also give a shout out to the Sports Council and the Parks and Rec for the belated that I might add to the, what they did for the uh, Sportsman Hall of Fame. So yes, again, shout out to them. The, the main thing is the cooperation that we're getting between the Sports Council and Parks and Rec. Together, we're better. Is that what the word is? I think that goes a long way. Um, on the uh, 29th, the TUA board had a meeting to select. We voted at that time to look within the department, the agency, to look for candidates from within. And at that time, we decided to look first within, and, and subsequently, we voted to select the board selected uh, Alan Parr. So Alan will make a good replacement for Brian Skelton. Also at TUA, the policy committee voted and we reviewed all of the policies within the TUA agency to uh, update some of those policies that were needed some tweaking. And uh, I want to give a shout out again to the Mayor's Youth Council for the work they did in helping select what I like about Telehoma Awards. And last week I did awards to Robert E. Lee and to East Lincoln, and this week I'll do awards at Bel Air and, and Fair. So that's coming up this week. Also, I want to announce tonight that uh, Miss Anita May, who had been serving on the THA, Telehoma Housing Authority, is no longer eligible to be serving as a THA representative, but she is able to replace Laurel Stone on the, as a commissioner so I'm appointing her to serve, Ms. appointing Ms. May to serve the remainder of Laurel Stone's term, which will expire in October 31st, 2024. Also announcing a vacancy on the THA board for a resident representative, which will, 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 fall, will fill, and I'll fill that in one, one month from, from now. So that, uh, I think that's my report. We'll move right on to the report from the city attorney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Son. Mr. Uh, Quick received notice this afternoon, and I didn't get my email, ladies and gentlemen, before I came over here, from Doug Garrett, the staff attorney for the legislature, that our 
revised charter has now been approved by legal in Nashville and is being sent to Senator Bowling and Representative Bricken, so we're on the way. So we finally went, worked through a lot of kinks last week, a little odds and ends, back and forth a lot of emails, and finally got that done. So it should be forthcoming shortly from, I hope, that it passes by both of the, those bodies and comes back to us soon. Secondly, um, Chief Sons and I are working on something that may be kind of interesting, is to work out an agreement with the Board of Education regarding allowing our canine dog to uh, conduct sniff tests at the high school after hours. I think it'll be kind of fun to do and might be kind of illuminating what we might find out there. I hope nothing, but hey, we're going to work on an agreement with them to do that. Uh, I'm working on the pending litigation report that Ms. Wilson requested. I'm asking all the attorneys, the out-of-town attorneys, representatives in the city to give me up-to-date reports. I should have that for you shortly. I've got most of them. Also, one other thing that I've been talking about for a long time, the downtown landscaping program. It's almost a reality. Mr. Craft opened bids with Ms. Wilson last week. The low bid was a lot less than we thought. Mr. Mann and I are collecting donations from property owners downtown and other interested people. We should have that finalized shortly, and hopefully the next meeting we can approve that and approve that project and start moving forward with it. Do you have any questions about anything? Okay, thank you very much. Report from the city administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the mayor and I attended the TML Legislative Conference last Monday and Tuesday, and it was a very good opportunity for me to uh, get to know some of the other city administrators and really understand that, that a lot of the challenges that we have as a city right now, that just about every city in Tullahoma or every city in Tennessee is, is uh, having that same issue. So I uh, was able to make some really good connections with that. The mayor and I also got to sit in on a legislative session and had some uh, time to speak with Rush Bricken. So uh, it just, it it was a really good conference. Um, w this uh, last week sat through a presentation with Retail Strategies, which is the vendor that TAEDC has contracted with, gave us an overview uh, of just some of the things that are going on in our surrounding area, as well as some of the opportunities that could be coming our way in the next three to five years. Uh, so uh, a lot of people have their eye on Tullahoma as far as uh, the place they want to live and maybe a place they want to do business. and. Uh, uh, look forward to those those relationships and those opportunities uh, coming together soon. Uh, I've had uh, the opportunity to meet with three downtown business owners in the last week. Talk about plans for the future. Uh, they uh, what they what they're looking at doing with their building now, uh, and also what uh, what they're looking to do with some of their business opportunities. Uh, did have a great meeting with uh, Mr. Randy Higgs, who owns the corner building at Jackson and Lincoln, which is the Renaissance Antiques. Uh, he and I had a great conversation, and looking forward to meeting with him some more and just coming up with an idea of what what he wants to do with that building. And, and he does understand the presence of that building as far as the significance of where it's located and that it's a visual point, a vocal point for when people make uh, go across that intersection. So looking forward to meeting with them some more. Uh, had a meeting with the uh, Kiwanis, uh, members of Kiwanis today talking about 41A, just shoring up plans uh, for this coming year, uh, getting an idea of how things went last year, but making sure that they understand that they have the community support and the city support in whatever they need to do to make this year's event successful. They were very excited with what they saw last year and uh, so we're looking forward to continuing to support that that uh, opportunity as well. Uh, proud to say that uh, our migration from rack space is over. I know that there were some issues. I know we had some some concerns here and, and I think the biggest question I have for you is are, is anyone having email issues now? Have we gotten all of those corrected? Okay. Uh, so that's good. I want again want to thank our IT uh, manager uh, Adam Booker did a great job with that. So again, if you have any concerns or questions with your emails or, or, or any concerns or uh, needs on how that works, uh, let me know. Uh, we are going to be re uh, meeting with uh, a consultant from MTAS who has gone through and basically looked at our personnel regs and policies, making sure that we're up to date, that uh, all things that need to be in there are included, and maybe see if there's some things that, that could be outdated. So Lisa Shepard and I will be meeting with him next week week. 
uh, was able to do a ride along with uh, the Tellhama Police Department and agents from the Alcohol Beverage Commission on Saturday night and uh, basically making sure that our uh, retailers who sell alcohol, mainly beer, are following the guidelines as far as making sure that uh, they're IDing their customers and things like that. Uh, Miss Ashley uh, will have a report on, on the results of that uh, activity uh, later in the beer board meeting. Uh, did send out an invitation to Tellhoma City Schools as requested in item 2424 from February's meeting, uh, asking them to come to a joint session with us, study session. Uh, I should hear back hopefully sometime this week on some possible dates and times that we could try to make that happen. Uh, we'd like to introduce Emma Cook. Emma, if you'll stand for a minute. Emma joined us uh, last Tuesday, and she has been drinking from the fire hose ever since. Uh, she has done an outstanding job. I'll let you have a seat. Uh, she has done an outstanding job of basically just jumping into the deep end and, and going at it. Uh, has already started uh, writing press releases for us and uh, doing some other things with some of our different departments. Did a great job today in welcoming the farmer's market who came. All of their vendors came, so she was able to uh, able to meet with them and get some of their ideas that they have and make sure that we're meeting their needs. Uh, in return, they have told me that they're going to teach her how to be Southern over the course of the next six to eight months. So looking forward to that. I think she's got her first sun drop and what was it, RC and Moon Pies coming up soon. So so you're, you're getting her to get indoctrinated, Ms. Cook. Oh, Jack Daniels. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, a couple of last things. I had a paper handed to you. We revised the budget schedule as far as adding what you had asked for as a board, adding the sessions for our different departments. So if you'll look in there, uh, you'll see that we have added all of those, and they'll be occurring uh, starting on the 11th. Uh, but I do also want to go back to we've also completed the application process for the nonprofits and those that are receiving money through hotel motel tax or through uh, the community service organization uh, program that we've had. So those those uh, applications are going to be available online this week, and we're going to have a press release. In fact, we've already written one up, and it should go out that will explain to people what that is, where they need to go to access that. They will turn those into us. They'll have until April 1 to turn those into us. Then for what we'll do, and, and I'll go over this in more detail at the study session, but then we're going to be able to submit all of the applications to all the board members. Then you'll be able to go through uh, over the course of uh, the whole month of April in order to, to review those and then score them. And then you can tell us what you think works, what doesn't work, and, and, and that. Uh, it has an accountability component, which I know Alderman Barry was looking for, which is what impact does it have on the community. So we, we've made sure to put that in there. So we'll get more of that to you. We'll show you how that works. It's a very simple process, very uh, close to what Alderman Wilson went through when uh, going through candidate selection, basically just scoring on, on different criteria that we'll have set up. So looking forward to, uh, to having a great uh, budget season this year. Year, and that is my report. Yes, May I ask real quick to put the administrator on the spot, semi on the spot, to quickly update the Cedar Lane sidewalk project. You had sent me notes on that. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a I, the public. I think this is one of our better kept secrets mm -hmm. is the Cedar Lane sidewalk project and that it is something that is paid for. It is something that is happening. Mm -hmm. And so if you could just kind of quickly, and I'll probably ask this every couple of months, just, uh, but I read and thank you for as, sharing. As, as well you should. So I'm going to let Butch, Butch and I talked about this. He gave some of the comments, but I think it'd be better coming from him. It, it's, it's on the move. Um, we got delayed, if you all recall, between the land swap with the hotel at the Wishbone. We had to swap some property with the that group, and it took a little time to get some paperwork done, but we're back on track, and it is moving forward. Mm -hmm. So we're still in design, uh, <laughs> but we are moving forward now. We just got delayed there for several months mm -hmm. getting all that swap back. We tried to do that just because if we would got into having to do that with TDOT, it would have been a long process so it was better for us to delay it this way to keep it moving. 
Thank you so much. That's um, such a huge thing. There's an FYI, we did get uh, <laughs> notice to proceed with right away on lead for bills, so we took a step forward there last week. And then another to add to that, uh, we are in the design phase for Northern Boulevard where we've looked at it, straightening that out and then also have the, the signal there. So that's in the design process as well. Awesome. Thank you. And one other thing, the uh, sidewalk project on Boca Road and Gage Lane is underway and part of the sidewalk that we're being constructed is going on really well. That's very well. Thank you. Can I say something real quick, um, Mr. Quick? Yes, ma'am. Um, I wonder if we could, when we're getting ready to start a project, if, if we if we could kind of get a heads up just so that we can kind of get the word out to people that, you know, to expect it or, you know, when we're asked questions about it that way we... You're right, and that's one of the things that, that we've we started initiating. We haven't gotten our first update, but we're looking to also provide those types of updates once a project starts, such as Wilson Avenue. So uh, we're supposed to be receiving monthly updates from TDOT as to where we are in the process, any any issues that people need to be about or think about. But we'll make sure that we put that out in press releases, but also make sure you have that because I know you'll have people asking you as you walk through town. I mean, even like with the drainage stuff mm -hmm. and um, maybe even a TUA project. I mean, if we could kind of get um, a heads up on those things sure. when we're asked for. You know, I, I, I fully agree. Thank you. Thank you for those reports. Mm -hmm. Moving into the consent agenda, we have a motion from Barry, seconded by Glick. Any questions on the consent agenda so on the minute from the last meeting? Ready to vote. Passes seven to zero. Moving into new business, we have five items that re re relate to rezoning tonight. Ordinance number 1622, an ordinance to amend the zoning map of Tallahoma, Tennessee, set forth in Tallahoma Municipal Code, to rezone a parcel located along Kings Lane from medium density R2 to neighborhood commercial C3. Any motion? Motion from Glick. Second by Ms. Wilson. Any questions on that rezoning? Are we ready to vote? That passes seven to zero. Order number 1623, in order to amend the zoning map of Tallahoma, Tennessee, set forth in the municipal code to rezone a parcel located 23, 2230 North Jackson from, that's from C2 to C3. Any motion? Motion for Alvin Wilson. Second by Mr. Mathis. Any questions on that rezoning? Ready to vote. Seven to zero. Ordinance number sixteen twenty four in order to amend the zoning map of Tallahoma, Tennessee, to rezone a parcel on located on Old Shebbeville Highway. That's from Ag Agricultural Low Density to Residential R one. Any motion? Make the motion, and if we can get a second. <coughs> Our locker has seconded that motion. Any questions about that rezoning? <coughs> ready to re vote? Ready to vote? I have a comment. Excuse me. Change the vote. Okay, you recognize. Um, you know, as being an alderman, um, it's it's our duty to advocate for the best interests of the community. Um, you know, this this item rezones agricultural property um, to residential without any preliminary plat. Um, 
and I strongly urge a vote against the proposal would recommend that applicants resubmit with a pre preliminary plat to the Planning Commission. And the reason for this is because our city is already experiencing significant growth. Um, we have well over 1,000 new housing units in the pipeline right now, well over. Um, and you know, while growth can bring opportunities, um, it also presents challenges, um, particularly with infrastructure. Um, I think that we have to consider th you know, a, the strain that additional um, residential development could place on the roads, utilities, schools, other essential services. Um, and I think approving this reason without some sort of preliminary plat or, you know, it just ex exacerbates the problems um, by allowing unchecked expansion without adequate planning for the particular, um, without knowing what the particular development would bring. Um, and I think without a clear understanding of how this, this reason, you know, whatever it would be, we don't really know what it would be. Um, but we would have no idea how it fits in with our overall infrastructure strategy. Um, and, and that, I think that that would just it'd be a risk of um, overburdening our existing resources um, and compromising the quality of life for all of the current citizens. Um, you know, but, in light of, the, of the, these concerns, I would urge everyone to vote no on this. And with the caveat that you know, I think that the I would ask these um, applicants to resubmit with a preliminary plat. Oh, did you have your yes? Speak? Um, quick question, and if they're in the audience, they can just yes or no. I thought is the okay. So, do we know if they have a conservatorship? The people who wrote this letter, does anybody know? Have have they given us any information? Because it's my understanding that the correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna say two things. One is just from procedural standpoint. Procedurally, just what I'm reading here, I'm wanting to know if it's the uncle who brought the um, uh, brought this forward to have the zoning changed and filled out the request for a zoning change, or if it is actually the person who owns it. And here's why. If it's the uncle, we would need proof of a conservatorship. It shouldn't have passed through the Planning Commission without proof of that conservatorship because technically they don't have the right to request a zoning change. Only the individual does. So I might want to put this on hold just to make sure. And if it's the individual and it just says that they don't have mental capacity, I still might want to know if, anyways, who who brought this forward? Um, it's the his uncle, or I know it's the property owner James uh, Ian uh, Bastard, and he's also listed on the deed. But then this this note that we have up here basically tells us that he is bringing it forward on behalf of Ian. So I have a I have a little concern here on whether or not we can grant this based on the fact that Ian has, and I'm quoting here, some mental uh, function challenges. We do not have proof of, of a conservatorship and we don't even know if the person has capacity to be requesting such a change. So number one, from a procedural standpoint, we might be acting too soon. So I would, I would probably want to make a motion here in just a second. But second, I'll give you my opinion on this for what it's worth. Um, I also would be cautious if they do have capacity, and it is correct, to not change agricultural to R1. And here is why. R1 is the next threshold. And the next threshold, we're not going R2, we're not going to R3, but if they are unable 
to use the land as intended as agricultural and we do not allow them to build on it plus plats are to you never you never present a plat we can change that in the future but right now the rules are the rules we don't they do not have to submit a plat to planning commission for a zoning change and that would be they're not asking to develop a subdivision they're asking for a zoning change correct mr worsham i see you nodding over there um would you like to address that sure. I, I i just got this letter tonight i hope i happen to know these people um uh, i think it'd be a good idea to, to delay it to get a little bit more investigation into this thing i, I know the family yes and i'm not saying that we can't do it i just young man that's not been a judge incompetent or anything he's just a young man in his early 20s i right. think it's his uncle is helping him so to speak sort of like a mentor with this which is not inappropriate no but, but i didn't see this till mr rush gave it to me tonight and in view of the fact that there's some question about it i think in the best interest of transparency that, that you talk about a lot Ms. Almarker, and I think that's appropriate. Let's delay it until the next board meeting, do a little bit of research. I will say to you, based upon what Ms. Mr. Edwards and my research has indicated, if this request is consistent with our plan that we've already adopted, we have to have a very good reason to deny this request if it's consistent with our plan. It's my understanding from Mr. Rush that it is. And, and so I we lost a lawsuit when we a number of years yes. ago yes. when we denied a request that was consistent with the plan at that time. Yes. So let's, let's make sure that we just get our ducks in a row and make sure we act appropriately. Mr. Worsham just made my second point for me. I'm not sure that we have the legal authority if they do have capacity. The only thing that made me want to pause it was this letter. But if we if we don't and it's consistent with our plan and we're going from Ag to R1, it could constitute a taking. And if they sue us, we probably won't win. So we need to change, like you said in that study session, perhaps if we want to put a moratorium or say, okay, we need to slow the building or the growth, there's other ways for us to do this. But they have followed our rules and therefore we have to abide by our own rules. So I would be, I will have to vote to delay, but um, uh, absent some other reason, I, I would have to be in in support of this. Um, so I make a motion to uh, lay this on the table till the next meeting until we can uh, have more, get more information. Make a motion to postpone until the next meeting. Yes. In a second. Um, I have a press my button. Second from no, I have to press my button. Wilson. Well, I think I put a motion, so just motion procedurally, I need to get a second and then you can talk. Okay. But I need a second for the motion to postpone. You got a second from Alderman Wilson. Thank you. Is there any further discussion yes. on postponing? Yes. Um, and I will respectfully have to disagree with the opinion from um, Mr. Edwards that we received. Um, I, I did, didn't bring it with me because I didn't um, realize that I would need it, but there, there, there was a, the city of Deckard actually was sued over um, something similar and um, in that ruling the city won it because we we can't you know there there has to there is some leniency we can't just continue to say okay to everything without some sort of plan of um, you know with with all of these other things in the the, plot, the pipeline that would be highly irresponsible so um, yeah, I, I have suggested um, that we seek not just one opinion from uh, Mr. Edwards, but another opinion from a um, another, reason to post another attorney and possibly MTAS um, as well on this because I don't think that we're locked into saying okay if just any anything that meets the bare minimum. I don't I don't believe that that's true. Have a motion to postpone and second. I had a request. Um, I'm not in favor of postponing. I'm ready to vote tonight on this, so let's we have vote a on postponing. To postpone. Yeah, that's why I'm just making my statement on postponing. I'm not in favor. We're ready to vote postponing. on postponing. Uh, uh, hmm. uh, my screen is. My screen already has seven out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't voted. <laughs> 
made it back up. Is it same motion to postpone? It's a motion. motion to postpone. Uh, his is frozen on something else. Mine says motion to postpone ordinance 1624 until next meeting, mm -hmm. 7 0. But oh, well, so I guess we know. Let me go back. Apparently, <laughs> in the future. I don't think I am. Or in the alternate universe. <laughs> alternate universe, yeah. I had to redo it. This is it's to postpone. There's four no's and three yeses. So we will not postpone. We'll vote on the motion. Is on ordinance number 1624. That motion fails four to three. continue to take these in order that they're presented, but we're going to come to the same thing on the next one after this this one, so we, oh, we didn't get them together because of the ordinance numbers where it didn't fall right. Anyway, ordinance number 1625, ordinance to amend the zoning map, Telloma, Tennessee, set forth in the municipal code, this is located at 911 North Washington Street, from commercial C2 to C3. The motion. Holman Glick, seconded by Eric Mann. Any questions on the motion, on the ordinance? Ready to vote. That passes seven to zero. Back to the old Shovel Highway. Another parcel adjacent to the one we just talked about is from Ag to R1. Again, need a motion. Got a motion from old Malmacher. And a second, old man. Any question about this? It's the same thing except an adjacent track parallel to the one we just looked at. So, no question. We're ready to vote on that one. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Make sure you have a good reason if you're going to vote against this. That was true. The you last one is now. Well. Before I'm, you vote, make your statement now. We should make a statement as somebody needs to make a good enough reason that's going to hold up in court because we're going to lose this one. I'm just going to tell you. It, we've got to have a better reason than because they're following our rules right now. So we need to change the rule. Or we have, if we vote no, we're going to get sued and we're going to lose. And I typically am on point with this, usually. So somebody make a statement to CYA, please. Well, I will. And I've, I've already made um, a statement. But I will also agree with what you said um, as far as if somebody goes into a contract without um, with without the legal authority or um, competence to do so that that makes a void contract so we would need to know that before I concur I think that's a great reason thank you <laughs> I mean good enough for me to not maybe they have to revisit it with proof that he's of com competence I guess is what I would say Can I vote on the ordinance It just don't make any sense. Okay, so we're giving him half of it. Over the next time, I think. I failed to understand, Mr. Attorney. I failed to understand. I failed to know how to handle this when we've had two identical tracks. All this, every everything in the 
that we've been given indicates they're simply two tracks side by side. We voted to approve the rezoning of one and we voted not to approve the rezoning of the other one. I guess he gets I think we're using King Solomon's approach. Yeah, well, that, that's, true. that's exactly what happened. And they didn't stay a good reason, under, you know, in number five here, to not rezone it, in my opinion. And that's in what the, Ms. Amarker, we agreed for once on the legal issue. I don't Can think I make a motion to that. reconsider? I don't think it was that. On, on the, first, uh, the first item, I think uh, Ms. Wilson made a, a very good reason not to rezone. Do you want to restate that for the first item, or is it necessary? I would, I would actually. Can I point of order this? Uh, we don't have any motions on the floor. We don't have any sec We don't have any seconds on the floor. We're, actually, I have we're, a we're cross talking back and forth. So I, I would say. I, I made so a I would, I would request the. You weren't recognized. So either the mayor, you. either the mayor, rec I point of ordered. That's how that this works, Jenna. But I had all your point of, I made a motion to reconsider. You can't just yell out a, a motion, Jenna. You just can't do it. You've got to be recognized. So the point of order is somebody either needs to make a motion to get something on the floor. You can't motion to reconsider unless you're on the prevailing side. So it has to be one of the people who are on the prevailing side of that motion. So your motion doesn't matter because you weren't on the prevailing side, period. So I would motion that we either move forward or thank you but this crosstalk is if there's anyone that was on the prevailing side on the previous motion or number 1624 you can make a motion to reconsider tonight we we'll have to have two-thirds majority because it's not on the agenda or are we talking which one are we talking about this the one that we just voted i guess one either one well you, you, we, don't, we, we had a uh, we're on the either one side on either one. Yeah, I would, th I would think that we reconsider on. number okay. the seven. Ordinance sixteen twenty six. You have to, you'll have to procedurally, you have to add an item to the agenda to reconsider, which will take a super majority vote to do that. So you're going to have to have five of us say yes. Yep, those motions to reconsider do require super majorities. No, to add it to the an item to the agenda to reconsider. That, that you already that passed item, in a session. Then that then once that item is added to the agenda, then you can vote to reconsider, and the vote to reconsider is just a supermajority vote. Yeah. So one of us didn't vote the, the the same as they did. So it would have to be probably that person. And you can only do it during that session. No, or the next session. Or the next session. Yes, you are correct. Think about what else. If we have no, as it stands, well, the way we're going to leave this right now, as it stands right now, we have failed one ordinance and passed another ordinance when the ordinances are exactly alike. Mr. Mayor, I might, you know, these, these ordinances have to pass Please. on two, have, this one needs to pass on two readings so the board will have another opportunity to revisit number seven here ordinance number 1626 at the next meeting that's a very very good point and i think that's probably well, the best way it, to leave this but wait once it failed it doesn't go to the next meeting no 1626 did the sawmarker okay right so, so it, have to be it takes two readings to pass it how do we correct the other one though the one that failed just, just to follow what mr barry said and make a motion to reconsider if it passes probably the appropriate procedure so one of the the people who voted no to it would need to make a motion to reconsider and i don't think they're going to do that and we're going to leave it as it is we're moving on well i do want to note that um you recognize uh, the city attorney stated that there was not a good reason given miss wilson did give a good reason i want to note that that reason exists uh, multiple reasons. Yeah, multi she gave multiple reasons um, on item number 1624. Um, did you make a note of those? Well, I think it's a matter of opinion as to whether or not it's a good reason, and we'll, the courts can decide that. In my opinion, it wasn't a good reason. The That's appellate court opinion. already decided on one similar, very similar. Mayor, I'd ask that we move on to the next slide. That's, That's a good question. Number 
we revisit the one that passed, we'll revisit that again. We're moving to resolutions now. <coughs> Ordinance number 1980, a resolution for the Board of Mayor Alderman to us to request and obtain a feasibility study for the future options for the City Hall building, the City of Tallahoma. And this is to go out for, and I'll get a motion on the floor, a motion from Barry, second by man, and I'll uh, ask for the City Administrator for background. Since it came from you, do you want me to do the background on it? Resolution. Okay. Uh, basically, and, and we, we can't get the exact date, but back in 2018, 2019, there was a study that was performed by a company that had been uh, requested by BOMA, basically to do an assessment on our building and to understand what challenges that a building our age has to it. Uh, they came back with uh, quite a few recommendations for us to consider, and they categorized them in uh, buckets of immediate near future which will be within the next year and then uh, future which was in the next five years uh, that contra or that those estimated costs at that time were about 1.3 million of those items that they had requested that we take care of, I think we have done an HVAC unit on the first floor level, uh, but we've not done any of the other items. There are concerns with this building as far as uh, what the future holds for this building. So in, in conjunction with that and meeting with Butch uh, and with others, we feel like it is we're at a point we need to determine what the future of this building is. And basically there's two, two ways to handle that. One is to do a total renovation which is desperately needed in this building. Um, or two, do we need to figure out what do we do for the next city hall when that may ever come up. Uh, and so that's why we've asked for a company to come in and basically just take, a, take another look at the study, not perform a brand new study, but to look at the study that we have, which was very thorough and detailed, but then say based on what we're reading and based on some other things we may have seen, here's what we recommend versus remodel versus you you know what, you may want to consider rebuilding. And then if that is the case, give us an understanding of the property value that we have now based on where City Hall resides. So that's the motion. We got a motion and a second. Any question for the ready to vote? Is seven to zero. Resolution 1981, a resolution authorizing the city to tell home to participate in a safety partners. It's a matching grant for the so it's for the fire department, mm -hmm. and that's for turnout gear. It's three thousand dollar straight out grant. Motion from Barry, second by motion by man, second by. The, by I am seeing the very. We'll get there. Here we go. One pass is seven to zero. Item number 2829. Consider a request from Public Works Department to approve a contract agreement with Beach Construction in the amount of $372,167. $0.84, which includes an alternate number two and an authorized mayor to sign the agreement. And I know that every one of you have read that <laughs> contract that began on page 84 and ended on page 293. So we need a motion from Derek Mann and Sigmund by Daniel Berry. That's for the... that we, we authorize this funding. We're just now selecting a contractor is all we're doing here. And that's Beach Construction. They were the low bidder on this. We need to vote. This is 7-0. Resolution 24-40. Consider a request from the city administrator to accept a grant of $1,500 from the Tennessee Department of Ag 2023 Enhancement Program to support the farmer's market. Motion from Barry. Senator by man. Any question? 
me to vote. Zero. Mr. Mayor, um, upon reviewing some documents, I would like to make a motion to reconsider on the second parcel of property that I voted in the affirmative. Um, yes. Is that number 1625? Yes. We need, we need to at least be consistent. If we're going to say yes, we need to say yes. If we're going to say no, we need to say no. But I make a motion to reconsider based on something I just read. Procedurally, what we would need to do is add an item to the agenda to reconsider. So you first have to make a motion to add. But it's already on the agenda, so I don't think we need to do that procedurally. That is, that is that is Robert's rules and that is procedure. That is not. Or we can wait correct. until the next meeting. We just I would like to make a motion to reconsider an item that is already on the agenda that we just voted on. I make a motion to reconsider. We have a motion on the floor to reconsider. Ordinance number 1625 by Alderman who voted in the affirmative. In the affirmative on the previous motion. 1626. It's the second one. 1626. 1626. 1626. Sorry about that. That's right. That's right. I would need a second. Can anyone second it or just anyone can second it? Anyone can second it. I'll second. Holman Hallmacher, a second by Holman Glick, to reconsider order number 1626, which was passed four to three. Twofold. Uh, may I have the floor? Um, I would like to see more information on this, but that's only one reason. This case that I'm reading, the Day versus City of Deckard, um, Four of the good reasons why they upheld the decision to not rezone were first, the proposed development would place additional pressure on an already crowded school that serves the children living in the area. Second, the proposed development would impact traffic in the area that was already congested at peak travel hours. Third, the density of the proposed development made it incompatible with neighboring property. And fourth, a great number of the persons currently residing opposed rezoning. So while that can't be your only reason, opposition, it can actually be one of the reasons. Uh, but based on, I do understand there is some opposition, um, but mainly based on the lack of understanding of this, um, I would like to reconsider. They, it will not prohibit them from bringing it back to us again in the future. Um, given other things considered to make sure that we can accommodate this rezone, um, uh, both uh, legally and procedurally. So um, I would like to reconsider my vote at this point. A motion from Alderman Almark and second by Click. Any further discussion on the reconsideration of that Alderman number 1626? I'm ready to vote on it. We're voting simply to reconsider at this point. Oh, wait a minute. And the reconsider vote is six to one. Six to one. And now we vote on the original as considered. Now we can vote. Go back to sixteen twenty-six. And he'll just pull it back. And have a revote on it. Motion for Hallmacher. Second from Holden Wilson. 
made the vote on rezoning from Ag to R1. It fails five to two. Not half and half. Okay. Very good. With that, we go on to a new item that was brought by Alderman Barry. Alderman Barry, would you please state your motion? We do a great survival. Make a motion to hold an election to replace the mayor pro tem. Point of order. Need a second. Need a second first. Point of order. <laughs> Get to hear my point. What's first. your point? Well, we would be in violation of Robert's rules, Mr. Mayor. Based on some point, we are still in session from the last time we held this exact vote to appoint a mayor pro tem, and we are still in the same session, and the reconsideration timeline has thus passed. And if you were going to not want me to be mayor pro tem, as you said earlier, you would have need, needed to reconsider that either at that meeting or the very next. But during this session, that would be an improper vote to take. So I think that that would be part of the discussion if we got a seat. No, actually it's a point of order, which means the mayor needs to say, yes, Robert's rules says motions to reconsider can't take place during the session. We're not reconsidering, we have a new vote. It's a new vote on the same item. It is the same exact item. Previously, we have already had an election to vote on a mayor pro tem during this session. This would be illegal based on Robert's rules. You can't bring a motion that has failed. No, you can't bring a motion period that we've already voted on. Actually, one second. I already pulled the rule. No, I, this is a point of order. You don't get a second during a point of order. So. Members cannot reconsider a motion in the following cases when the provisions of the motion have been partially carried out. I'm sitting in the seat. Uh, when a vote has caused something to be done that can't be undone. When a contract has been made and the other party has been notified of the vote. Guess what, y'all? I was notified. Um, when some other parliamentary motion can obtain the same result. You can get it again at the end of this session. So this would be an illegal vote during this session, absent some reason to remove me from my seat. This is the equivalent of removing me from a seat I was voted to. It is illegal and it is improper. And just because I haven't resigned from this seat or been kicked off of it is the only reason that you're trying to do this. Wait, you're, you're running for mayor? Maybe you'll have that seat in a few months. I don't understand why you're doing this right now other than to Calls a show. Can we get a second on this? Actually, I want the mayor to rule on my point of order. It is an illegal vote based on parliamentary procedure. I actually pushed my button to speak, but I agree with what you're saying, Alderman Almacher. We have to have a motion. No, we're, we're discussing the it point. It is against uh, Robert's rules of order. Based on what I just read and the fact that our city, it is our, or it's an ordinance, it's in our municipal code that we follow Robert's Rules of Order, and that is very clearly and plainly stated in Robert's Rules of Order. Well, you just you don't get follow. to have another vote because you didn't like how the first one went. You didn't just follow Robert's Rules of Order. You, you don't get another decide. vote based well, on because you, you didn't like the first one. Yeah, went. Mayor. Uh, we need to have a set. Um, with this, it may be a moot point. I may not get a second on this. So we need to get a s it's but it's illegal. Got, it's illegal to even get a second, is my point. No. It's a, you cannot consider <laughs> an irrelevant motion. Um, Barry. Yeah, I, I make a motion to hold an election to replace the mayor pro tem. And we're, we're <laughs> sorry, sir. There is no second here. So we're not following the rules now. I've made a point. The mayor, you either need to say that you understand the point or you need to overrule it and based on some sort of parliamentary procedure because if not, I'll take this puppy to court. I've got nothing better to do. Apparently. Mr. Washington, the city attorney, can you make an 
give an opinion on this yes, conversation. Yes, I do. Uh, this is not a motion to reconsider anything. Under our city code, there is no prescription as to how often a mirror pro tem can be selected. As I've told you before, traditionally we've done it every year, but there's nothing in our code that requires us to do that. Theoretically, you could vote on a mirror pro tem at any meeting because we didn't vote on a term of office when we did that. Our charter is silent on it completely. There's no provision in our charter as it now exists for a mayor pro tem. So that the fact that Ms. Almacher was elected to be mayor pro tem at one time does not mean that she was elected for any term of office. What about so sessions of Robert's motion. rules? What about sessions per Robert's rules? I think this is an appropriate motion. Now, what about sessions per Robert's rules? You still didn't address my point. My point is not about our charter. My point is not about our municipal code. My point is about Robert's rules. In a given session, you can't, yeah, you're right. Our, ch our charter is silent, but it's not silent on what rules were to be prescribed by. We have already had an election. We've already had this exact same motion before us in this session, which a session, a session is a legislative year, and we all know that, and that is correct. A session is a legislative year. It would be improper to have this before us again during the same session. And take off, off your political, whether or not you like me, dislike me sitting in this seat or have ulterior motives because you want to run for mayor. Follow the rules that you put in place. Heard from and if you were sitting here, you'd be making the same point as me. We've heard from the city attorney regarding the validity of this motion that we have made and seconded. And if there's no further discussion, I'll call the question. So how, how it would work is we would need to vote yes to this, and then after this is passed, then we would take nominations that would be made from the floor and you vote until a nominee is either unchallenged or receives a majority vote, which was never received. Mayor, you need to uh, the members present. That's correct. correct. That's correct, yes. <laughs> Mayor, this is ready to vote on the adding this to the agenda. <laughs> This is four to three, okay, to the agenda. Okay. It's a, a vote to hold the election. No, I think you need to add that to the next election. You only added this item. You didn't actually add it to have the vote. Okay, at this time, what would be appropriate would be to... We just make up our own rules. It's okay. Every, uh, every alderman to submit a name, and then we'll have to pay the ballots. The city of Telecom loves lawsuits, y'all. Nominate Jerry Mathis. Mathis. to nominate Alderman Glick. Alderman Glick. And yours. I'll nominate Alderman Almacher. We got three. Okay. We need paper ballots. Yes. We get paper, paper ballots. I don't have anything to write on. Anybody else get one?
Oh, the top one is who voted. The bottom one is who voted for. <laughs> <laughs> Voted for Mathis. Armacher voted for Glick. Norris voted for Mathis. Mann votes for Mathis. Mary votes for Mathis. Glick votes for Armacher. And Wilson votes for Armacher. So Mathis. And the vote is for, for Mathis. That's the vote. That's the motion carries. Votes in, in favor of Mathis is made a protest. There's no other new business? Yeah, there is. It's got, yeah, there's not any. Study session. Uh, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to set it. Okay. I'm willing to set it. It's set for next meeting. Oh, okay. No vote needed. Okay. That's one of the priorities I have left is set a study session. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. No other new business. With that, uh, call to order the beer board. Any public comments from the beer board? <clears throat> Seeing none, go to the consent agenda, leave a motion on the consent agenda, and then it's from the February 26th meeting. Motion from Barry. Same as Ben Mathis. This is seven to zero. <laughs> this time is no other unfinished business. Under new business, we have a request for a beer board application special events permit for the Telehome Area Chamber of Commerce from Ms. Hope Nunley for Taste of Telehome on Monday, the March 25th. From four to seven at the Tello at the Tennessee Municipal at Tello National Guard Army. And that's from four to seven. Motion from Barry, second by yeah, motion from Man, second by Barry. Any questions? Ready to vote. Chamber number seven stands rules. They've had them before, so it passes seven to zero. At this time, I'd like to yield to uh, our city administrator for some comments that were, say, excuse me, I'll yield to the city clerk who was referenced by the city administrator earlier regarding some activity over the weekend regarding sale of underage. Uh, the police department had uh, two underage sales. We had three underage sales this weekend, two of which come between before this board and our next meeting. Um, one was liquor, so it goes before ABC, so we don't deal with that one. But um, we have to give them five days notice that they will have to come before the board. And I printed each of you a copy of that ordinance because it hasn't happened in so long, just so you could get familiar with it before the next meeting. So they'll be coming before the board to plead their case, if you will, as to why we should not, um, will there be any, uh, what is the procedure since there's been a violation? So uh, what is the procedure? For them to be fined. Okay. And that's listed out in this ordinance. Okay. For you to read. Is that before or after they come before the board? You, you will vote on that at the next board meeting. You vote on whether, whether or not to find them? Yes. Okay. Uh, or not. okay. They are, um, they have been signed.
incited into general session support. Very good. So that'll be on the agenda for next week. Yes, next week, next month. Very good. Next week. No other business will be adjourned.